Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Uh, there, when you hear me talk about hummingbirds, especially in the past, whenever my my videos and recordings were really just centered around the the Kansas City region and and and, and birds for the eastern uh, two thirds of the United States, when I talk about hummingbirds, you heard me say many times that we only have one hummingbird here regularly. Uh, in, the, in the whole, you know, pretty much east of the front range of the Rocky Mountains, and that is the ruby-threaded hummingbird. Now, now these videos have a much broader appeal than they used to, and not only that, um, I have, you know, local customers as well, people I've talked to over time who, you know, they, of course they travel out west and they, uh, they, they, gain an interest in hummingbirds and want to expand their interest in hummingbirds. And I hear a couple of common mistakes that are made. And I thought I would cover just those, just three species of hummingbirds today uh, that have slight range overlaps uh, and are the most confusing for people that are really, especially just learning hummingbirds. Uh, and the first, of course, I'll start with getting up the, uh, male ruby-throated hummingbird, which is the most famous of, of hummingbirds and the one that we see with all regularity, like I said, in the whole eastern two-thirds of the country. And the males have uh, the green backs, uh, white uh, fronts, and then the red gorget, um, and, and the flanks will be greenish too. But the, the first thing I want to talk about is that gorget, that throat on them, because it is uh, truly... Uh, not red. Uh, it, it, you can look at it and say, oh yeah, it is red in that picture, but very easily, as soon as that bird tilts its head a little bit one way or the other, that looks solid black. And that confuses a lot of people. It's that bending of light, uh, uh, much like in butterfly wings, that causes the color of that gorget in hummingbirds. And so that is one of the things that it causes confusion in these three that I'm going to be talking about. But know that, you know, it, it, I remember years ago reading an article and I was, I was just getting started um, that always said, you know, go with the odds. <laughs> if you're confused about a bird uh, and you, you think it, it, you live in the right in the heart or in the, where only ruby threaded hummingbirds occur and you see a bird that has a green back and a white belly, and then that gorget looks black to you. You don't have time to, to make it to watch it turn, and then the sun hit it, so it shows red. You can pretty much play the odds that it is a ruby-throated hummingbird. Now, whenever you're, you're into bird watching and you get these field guides that cover the rest of the United States, there are a couple of other hummingbirds in that book that will get, make you start guessing because uh, the one that occurs just to the south of us here uh, it, uh, and it occur, occurs down in, in Texas and to the west out in Colorado and up in that area, especially in dry areas, is the black chinned hummingbird. This is a black chinned male. And you can see that purple uh, fringe to its gorget, otherwise black gorget, but then that uh, purple uh, fringe there. and this is a bird that I'll get calls on and then people, you know, haven't watched long enough to see that ruby throat tilt his head so that the, the red uh, shows up and they just see the black and they have a book and they look in the book and they say, oh, it's got to be a black chin hummingbird. But they didn't see the purple fringe. They just see the black throat. And um, so they, they think that that's what it has to be. Yes, birds have wings and birds do turn up in odd places, but for uh, birds to show up out of their range is rare, very rare. And so uh, for up here in the Kansas City region and for us, and I know you people's points north and, and the further east you go, you know, it, it's just more rare for a stray hummingbird to show up. Now it can, I'm not saying it can't. I mean, they're, you know, they, they definitely have been documented. I'm just saying that for the most part, people get these confused, and it is really worth taking an extra look. And one thing about the uh, the ruby-throated hummingbird and the black chin hummingbird is they are almost identical in size and shape, bill shape and things are so similar. And when it comes to the females, i tell you how close they are. The females, of course, with the green backs and the white throats, um, the, with a, a rufous... I mean, a, I'm sorry, a, uh, a black chin hummingbird 
female, they are so close in appearance that even people who banned birds, when they catch them in the net, they have to measure all of the feathers that they, they for to distinguish the two, uh, to separate a female black chin from a female ruby throat. That's how closely the females look to each other. Um, and so that can be very, very confusing. So know that, uh, and, you know, if you're down in the desert in the southwest area or in the dry areas of Colorado and the west where, where black chins occur regularly, um, your chances of seeing those out there are very good. Uh, up here in the eastern two-thirds of the U.S., it's actually quite rare. Um, and if you see a, a, a bird with a black throat, you definitely want to watch it long enough if you can to see if that uh, the head tilts and you get that red gorget or you get that purple fringe would be there. Now, another... A uh, bird that falls in. I said I was going to cover three hummingbirds. Uh, th the one that, that, that also confuses people, especially for people from the east who travel to, say, Colorado. They go for, for and during the summer, they go on vacation and they go out there and they say, oh, I saw ruby throated hummingbirds all over the place out there. And actually, you didn't. Um, ruby throated hummingbirds, like, like I said, are restricted kind of. Uh, to the, maybe to the front range of the Rocky, but really even in Colorado, ruby throats are, are, are pretty uncommon, if not rare, but there is a hummingbird out there that will make you think it's a ruby throat. And that is the broad tailed hummingbird, green back, red gorget, but a little more to the purplish side of red. Um, and, and, but they look very much like, I mean, the initial thought is, wow, that's a, that's a ruby throated hummingbird. That is not a ruby-throated hummingbird. Uh, one of the telltale giveaway signs uh, of a broad-tailed hummingbird whenever you, you go out there is the sound. Uh, John Burwell, uh, I think, said that to me this year, years and years ago when we, we uh, were talking about him. And he camps out there a lot, and I've camped out there. And you hear them inside your tents in the morning when they're flying around your campsite, that they make a sound like George Jetson's little car. Uh, if you remember watching the little jet, the Jetsons uh, cartoon show and George, meet George Jetson and that he always had this little flying car and it went, made that sound. And that's what these birds sound like when they fly. It's not their voice. It, there, it is the sound that their wings make and the air passing through and they, they twitter around, they fly around and it's very distinct. Uh, and they will look like a ruby-throated hummingbird to us that are used to them, uh, but they are uh, not. They're a completely different species. Um, the females are, are similar uh, to ruby throats, but a little more rufous down the flanks and things. So they might be a little easier for you to tell apart than a female ruby-throated. Um, another of the confusing words is in, in the fall, and the coming, which will be coming up in post-hatching, which is late July, August, uh, whenever our ruby throats have hatched, those young birds, those fledgling birds, have a gray-green back, very mottled looking, um, and the wet bellies. But they, in the male fledglings, uh, as the summer goes toward the end, they'll start getting little flecks in their throat. Uh, you can pull them apart, but the females, the fleshings look very much like kind of shaggy young females, shaggy females, because, the, the, you know, the adult females have that bright, brilliant green back, whereas young females have a more grayish green back. And so, again, I'll get those calls in the fall and in and, and, and August. I've got three different kinds of hummingbirds. They're seeing the male ruby throat female ruby throat, adult, and the juvenile ruby throats. But um, for the other two, the the, the uh, especially broad-tailed hummingbirds, I'm not aware. There may be a record in, in, in the state of Missouri, but I'm not aware of it. Uh, it could be very, very rare here. Um, and the black chins, you know, they, they are in the, they're in the south south of us in Texas. And like I said, in the dry country in Oklahoma, they, there may be some records of black chins down in, uh, in the very Southern Missouri, South Western Missouri, but uh, just play the odds and, and give it a chance to look at them and know that where you are, where you live, your regular hummingbirds are generally the ones that you're going to be seeing. Not so much um, a, a, a super rare one, but I thought I would do that just to help you because I know people are traveling this time of year and they're going uh, 
around on vacation and seeing family and and, and those. And they, they, a lot of people take hummingbird feeders with them when they go uh, out out west and they set it up in their campsite and and enjoy the the hummingbirds that they're getting to see that are different uh, out in the, in the Western states. And there are a lot more hummingbirds than that. Like I said, I just wanted to cover these three that are confusing to people. Um, and uh, hopefully that straightens out a bit. So it's a really good idea for a program. Bird identification is always a topic. Uh, you know, there are more confusing uh, identifications out there. and We try to cover those here on the channel. So if you like the program, give us a like, give us a share. Send in ideas for future programs. If, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until then, come on, let's talk birds.